what you didn't seem not to what Bankley was doing at the beginning because they started as a draw as well. I feel the closest thing to what we're doing is similar to Lapo. Mm. Apple Market Microfinance Bank. But then what we're able to do is to make it more ethical and then make it more efficient using technology. I've always been an impact person. Yeah. Like we want to change Africa. A lot of people are depending on you. They're on the lookout for you like, okay, we believe in you, right? Being able to leverage on the network you have, mm. being conscious about it, investing in people. You're not using people, invest in them. We started money. Uh, we have two guys that joined us. Uh, I couldn't afford their salary. They were working with big companies then and they were just like, we believe in what you're doing. We just want to be part of it. Hi there, my name is PC Timmy and welcome to Founders Connect, a show where I spotlight the best of African innovation by hosting conversations with leading and emerging founders and operators in the African tech space. The goal is to discover the stories, learn the ideologies, the obstacles they overcame, the lessons they learned along the way, and very importantly, to document their journeys. Do like and comment on this video as you watch it and please subscribe to my channel. I promise there's always something fantastic to learn here. Enjoy the video. working at World Bank and uh, so my friend, uh, my friend Dapo, my co-founder, uh, we've been friends since OAU. Uh, we went to the same fellowship then and then we were connected in 2019. Yeah. And uh, 2019 was more like, I was still with World Bank. World Bank was more like a break for me from startups. I was tired of startup and all. And then, so World Bank gave that stability and all you're able to, but then, there's a thing around you liking chaos as well. Like, <laughs> so, so start up with your personality. You will not accept, but then you just find yourself again doing it. And uh, at that point, I was thinking about what next. And then, so we connected with that. Well, he too was thinking about what next. And we had the lunch at the backyard. And we spent like three hours just talking about, oh, what is possible? But no clarity about what to do. But then we're able to narrow it down to financial services and all. So that was the 2019, but we're not doing anything. So by 2020, COVID happened. And then one of my family friends, she lost her job. She talked about the idea of uh, starting a mobile money business, right? And then I was not really familiar with mobile money. I know, yeah, Paga and all that, right? So, so I invested in the business for her to start just to support. And she was very serious. Mm. Uh, she grew from like one outlet to like three outlets in two months. I was impressed. But then almost every week she would reach out that uh, she has one transaction, she needs one million. So I was providing that. But at the point I was worried, maybe she was using it for MMM. Mm. I know. Ponzi scheme. Ponzi, Ponzi scheme. So out of curiosity, I asked her like, I want to talk to other people like you, other agents like you. Then she told me there's a place in Naja. I know. Like, and uh, I should visit the person that I introduced that to the business. So I just stood up, oh yeah, follow me, to, follow me to this place. And we were driving. She said, Aja, she didn't tell me that you were going to repair. <laughs> so that was more like Shakwati and all. And we drove for like five, six hours. We almost turned back because there was traffic. So when we got to Shakwati, we were shocked that almost every household in Shakwati actually has a mobile money business. Mm. It was a thing there. And you still think, uh, you feel like Chapati is still part of part of Lagos, mm. right? So we met this lady called Temiri, right? Uh, Eunice, right? And when we met her, she came with like four other women. We we're just chatting with them to actually know whether my cousin was telling the truth or not. And they were just telling us all their problems. I'm not a savior. I'm not the savior now. And uh, at the point, uh, some guys came around that they want to do transaction like 500 k And the fact that they didn't have the enough liquidity, they lost the transaction, mm. right? And yeah, it was clear to us that there's a problem here, but we're not planning for this. So at that point, um, they just told us that that was November 2020, that December is coming, that we should help them, that is their peak period and all. So with that, they created a WhatsApp group, added myself and that ball. It was not planned, and then they just said, uh, give us today, we'll pay back next, uh, seven days next week. And this is the interest. Okay, jokingly, I just do that, I'll send 500K, right? And then uh, he created the Google form, created a, yeah, Google form. We did basic documentation, KYC, added them. 
And all through the week, that boy will be like, you are the one guaranteeing the 500. You pay my, you pay me my money back. Either way. Either way. I know. I was like, relax. You are, too, you are bigger than 500. <laughs> okay. So, uh, eventually, um, after seven days, they were supposed to pay like 3 p.m. So, by 1 p.m., they were reaching out to us like, uh, they want to pay. And it was not as if we had like a business account or something. So, we just sent them and they all paid, right? So after them, they said, can, can they pay more? Can they uh, get more? Get pay? more, I know. Yeah, we did. It was fine. We were not paying attention. We were trying to build a different product. Mm. We we're trying to just build something else. Not right. So, um, so eventually, we did that for like two months. We were not paying attention. So after two months, an incident happened. So normally, um, they pay like 7 p.m. every Thursday, right? So... On this particular day, one of them paid late. He paid like 30 minutes late. So, and we noticed that immediately he paid. Uh, they had to remove him from the WhatsApp group. So, so like his fellow mobile money agents yes, removed him? Yeah. So, we had to, so, I had to call the lady, Eunice, like, was, are you guys fighting? She said, no. The, uh, brother, what you're doing for us is favor. And, uh, and anybody that tries to jeopardize it, they're going to punish the person. Ah. So they are suspending the guy for like three weeks. I had to plead with them. And they said, no, it stands. I was like, oh, interesting. So I called up with her. They're like, this is real. These guys are serious. Can we actually check more about what can we do with this? And from there, we started thinking about lending. Lending is tough. Yeah. First, lending to salary nurses is something. But then self-employed is another, is a different game entirely. And when you think about lending in this part of the world, it's one thing that uh, this is not lending what in developed country because there's an infrastructure to actually back repayment, mm. right? Uh, your credit score is impacted. You're very conscious about that. But this part of the world, uh, the low trust is still, is still there, right? And then uh, the other part is people are not even conscious that this is my credit score. Mm. Uh, the other part is self-employed. What kind of data are you going to use to underwrite them? Some of them, they don't even use all their bank statements. They don't have their bank statements in one place. And the last one, which is the tough one, is there's no sense of recourse that peace borrowed me one million. I have to pay back. If I don't pay back, this is what happens, right? So, in a way, it makes it really tough. So, in reality, we just took a step back and said, okay, We've been doing this for like two months. What is working? First is, there's a common denominator that all of them are mobile money agents. Mm. The other part is, I was the one that invited Peace, Shola, Emeka, and all. We formed that group. And I have that consciousness that if I default, it affects all of them. They know my house, they know my family member, they know my pastor, they know my imam and all that. So. That's more like Shusha on the writing on its own. Mm. This is Africa. And there's that sense of, I can't be shamed in my community. It can happen on social media, but this is my house and all that. I will so, go and buy something from the US first. They will see yeah. me, I know. So, in essence, um, so we talked about that, that. First, the sense of community is there with the WhatsApp group that we created. And that is more like an African thing, mm. right? Uh, second is the fact that there's a sense of recourse that if I default, it affects every other person. Now, the last one is, uh, no, the third one is more like, if peace invited me, me into the community, every time I pay, by, pay, back, I pay my loan back on time, not just like payback, we compensate peace for good behavior. Mm. So there's a balance between recourse and uh, reward, mm. right? And uh, we started out with that. Uh, we didn't rush to build any product for like six months. It's so just, just WhatsApp group WhatsApp and Google, group form. Google form. We did over 1,000 loans through WhatsApp group and Google form manually. Uh, it was a tough period because every Thursday by 7 a.m., they gave us a deadline, but they have to get their loan by 7 a.m. And they have to pay back 7 p.m. Yeah, so if we don't give them by 7, uh, 7 a.m., they fine us. <laughs> it was clear. So it was both ways? Yes. Interesting. So, because we're running manual, um, yeah. running the whole thing manu manually. So eventually, for like six months, uh, Thursdays were tough for us because we had to disburse, we had to reconcile, 
we had to just manage everything, mm. right? So, and that happens continuously. But the biggest thing for us is all through this period, we were watching their interaction within the WhatsApp group, the way they were meeting each other, the way they were talking. The moment you notice a group is not talking, something is off. Mm. If one person defaults, are they supporting, right? And at the point, so eventually, by the time we launched, we're more like product market fit. Mm. Because the way we design it is such that you have a group of five people, there's a network effect. We don't have to do so much. Uh, you'll be the one to invite the next person. Mm. we on the right So did you have like multiple WhatsApp groups? Was it like one WhatsApp group? So every friends. group was a WhatsApp group as yes. well? Yes. So there's a limit of, you start with five, maximum of 25, right? An interesting thing is, if you, you can make it two, you can make it three. We've tried different model. Eventually, we're able to settle with that. And uh, the multiple group, we now have, we have tower for them by every month. Mm. It was interesting. It was more like an African thing, mm. such that someone is having barrier. People were contributing money. <laughs> uh, so we actually, there was one that actually, one of the members had a baby, like two babies, and immediately they named the money baby. Yeah, fortunately, one of them is our staff now. He works with money, I know. It was interesting, right? That uh, when everything was manual, uh, there was time we had to, vi we visit them most of the time. And the biggest highlight for us was the fact that at the point, the clusters were growing, but we wanted more clusters, mm. right? And I just went to visit, myself, I went to visit uh, the first um, cluster head units, right? And uh, while visiting her, we're just gisting with her, like, how is the family and all that? And we're asking her, like, ah, can we create more clusters? And she was like, what's the motivation for me to create more clusters for you? Because if you create more clusters, am I going to make anything from it? Mm. So if you remember, when you have a cluster and the person repays back on time, you can benefit, yeah. So she was not like, why can't we make it in layers such that if I create another cluster, I get another cluster leader mm. and they form that cluster, right? I, my cluster, the next cluster is still connected to my cluster. Right. Such that... You... S so, right. So like a whole pyramid of some sort. But in a good way. Yeah. Right. So we're talking about mm. different clusters. So, um... First is, I have a peace cluster. And then she has a 5 to 25 people. And uh, each one of them are tied to each other. And... They're very conscious that if one person, it affects every other person. Now, over time, people in the cluster, they grew because we gamified it mm. manually. That you're moving from one level to the other. Mm. At the point, you're, you're going to get to a level where you can actually break out to form your own cluster. Mm. So you're now becoming cluster leaders yeah. and be getting benefits. Well, you're still, but you're still, you're report. still connected to your parent cluster. Right. And the reason why you're connected is such that you're compensated for, everybody is compensated for good behavior. Mm. So we make it aspirational that if you maintain good behavior in this community, you're going to get to a point where you have your community and all. And it was interesting that when we're doing that, uh, the cluster head, instead of them taking their uh, reward, right? They will tell us, no, I want to buy TV. I want to buy a uh, tricycle. Mm. So they'll start saving it. I mean, I think there was a case where someone bought a car. I can't remember. Like, it was interesting. And I miss those days. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, so we learned that. I learned that from... Interacting having, with... Yeah, yeah, being part of them. Like, I went to visit them. And based on that, we just designed the product, right? That was the first one. Now, the other part is... Um, uh, when we launched the app, right? It was more like a ready market. It was just growing. Mm. It was growing very fast. We've not done any major marketing. We mm. don't have to, right? And there's a way they call out each other. That's okay. We've seen a case where someone actually wanted to defraud us. And it was the community that said, no, they're not going to give loans. It's more like the community is involved in giving the loans. Right. So they made it clear that, no, the person is getting married. He's going to use that money to get married. <laughs> I've seen all sorts. We've seen... A case where someone was about to default and they know. And the interesting thing is, they, they, they visit each other. They went to visit the guy like, no, 
Yes, so. Well. so, it's a thing for us that people are able to handle with each other to do the right thing. We don't have to go through the phase of recovery and all that. Do you have costas all over Lagos now? Is it still like when mostly we st when we st Yeah, we had, uh, we were like, like over 15 states or about 20 states. It was growing organically. All I just need to do is get someone in Kano, Kaduna. We're in Kano, we're in Kaduna. Uh, yeah, Edo and a lot of them. How many users do you, do you currently have? Oh, uh, so we have about over 15,000, right? And um, these are all mobile money agents? No, the business okay. has evolved a lot. Mm. It has evolved a lot. Uh, to, to what? What are they? what? Interesting. So we started with mobile money agents, mm -hmm. right? So, and uh, at the point, it has always been clear to us that the community lending model is something that works for Africa. A lot of traditional microfinance banks, they've tried it. Yeah. Uh, we read a lot about Grammy Bank in Bangladesh, right? Mm. It's, it's been around for over about 10 years or thereabout. So we started with a niche so that we can learn a lot, right? But then uh, last year, we extended the same model to other forms of businesses mm. to actually test that does it work. Mm. And we learned that last year that, okay, we can actually use it for other businesses beyond mobile money agents. Right. right? And then the other part for us is risk management. We're very keen about risk management. Um, focusing on mobile money agents alone is more like you creating concentration risk such that if anything impacts mobile money agents, it's affecting your business mm. and it's happened. So a lot of times we're very paranoid, like, okay, what can go wrong? Mm. And early last year, we made that decision that we reduce the size of our portfolio when it comes to mobile money agents and we extend to other verticals such that we have like five verticals where we play or mm. more, we're increasing it. So we're well diversified when it comes to our asset generation mm. and uh, it makes it easier that you can manage risk, you can underwrite each one of them differently but the underlining parameter for us every time we're taking a vertical it's simple right first is what is their unit economics the second one is uh, their cash conversion cycle you can be doing real estate it's long so vertical so mobile money agent is almost everything yeah so the third one is i need to know what is your profit margin i need to know your business so when i have those in place and the numbers make sense, then it seems like a business that can work for my model, mm. right? So uh, we expanded to other forms, other businesses last year. And uh, yeah, with that, consistently we've achieved 99% repayment with the model. Um, we did over $22 million in financing last year. And uh, the interesting thing is with the model, we're able to achieve 99% repayment. So there's another angle to the model that I, I, I was trying to talk about earlier, yeah. which is the same thing. We, most of the things that we've done with money has been more like we're learning from the user. Mm -hmm. So there was a time uh, where in one of our clusters, one of the agents had an accident and you know, the model is there that if you default, it affects every other person. Mm -hmm. That means the other people will not be able to get the loan to so they hold your account. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it was it was a clear case of it could not just be. It was not bad behavior. So after waiting for like three days, the cluster just said, why can't we contribute this amount to support? Mm -hmm. And we just, within two hours, they were. So myself and the just said, okay, we're going to add to the money as well. And they were able to raise the money that day. And after then, they just make it the habit that before they take loan at all, they save together, mm. right? So with that, we built another product that has to do with cluster pause. As you're save, as you're taking loan, you're saving alongside, such that even if anybody defaults, from the box you can and they vote. You guys are really learning from your users. No, no, so we're very close to them. Very yeah, close to them. That makes so, sense. And, uh, let's let's backtrack a little bit. You yeah. mentioned um, that you used to work at World Bank, yeah. and before that, you did like a lot of startups. So World That's Bank was right. like a break from startups. So let's 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 go back to you for a minute. Um, tell me about like your background, like growing up, and then walking me through school, and then your career way before money. So um, I grew up in a very quiet town in uh, Iwo, in Ocean State, right? Uh, so my family was in Lagos before we moved to Iwo, and then. Uh, started life in Iwo. Uh, I grew up in a big family. How uh, many is a big family? Uh, 
average there's always like 20 people sometimes 30 it's a big family actually. <laughs> so because my dad had a, a lot of people that he was supporting and all and uh, growing up i was the last so i grew up quiet i grew up more like on my own so that really pushed me to focus a lot more on reading mm. and then uh, my dad was very strict i would say that i grew up in my father's compound you know that thing that you can't you can't go outside you can't go outside right so that made us to spend a lot of time reading right and uh, my dad too was more like an an inspiration for for me right because he grew to the top of his career at guinness right as a director as a then and then built a lot of businesses right so watching him was more like okay he did it i can do better mm. and um so all through the period staying in a war i was very academic i was very academic um yeah being the best was not really hard for me <laughs> so at the point you know that thing around physics chemistry biology yeah they are the best and your teachers they are predicting your future already medicine like, engineer doctor. no yeah you're a doctor like and already so my penultimate year so i cleared on my result jab and all and then i got medicine it was, oh. it was rewarding but then uh, I got everything, but my dad was very clear, like, I've paid your school fees for your final year. You have to go back and finish. You can start school. That broke me, like, so, so that pushed me to say, okay, I moved away and then I moved to Lagos, right? So when I was in Lagos, I was staying with my sister. So you did, instead of going to university from SS2, I guess, you were you still, you did your final year. I got my, I did my final year. I did medicine a bit. Right. I came, you know that thing that you felt, uh, you've got medicine mm. already. And then the now saying should be sitting with. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like the big boy already, I know. So, so just going back, I moved to Lagos. So while I was with my sister, uh, it's another big family, I know. We have a lot of friends. So then we play chess a lot. And a lot of very senior guys that will come, they play chess. But then I was very clear that, okay, this is, I don't want to be, I want to build a great career like my dad, I know. Mm. So there was a particular one, uh, Brody, that, and then Bro Larry, I know that, all of them. So. I noticed the guy will come, he spends a lot, he looks good, drives good car, and all. And it seems like my kind of life. And then I asked him out of curiosity one day that, what did you study that you're living large like this? And then he told me geophysics. <laughs> <laughs> so I was now like, oh, so he now made it worse. I think I visited the office and then I saw, ah, this is nice. It seems like it. And from there. No more mention. No, and uh, no more medicine. It's just, and you know, medicine was more like Ben Carson book. Yeah. I think a lot of us... Gifted have, hands. Have, yeah, gifted yeah. hands. I know. And big picture. So, no more medicine. More like geophysics. And then I pushed for geophysics. Got geophysics in a fair. And then got in... Yeah, my early years, I was the one of the best students. And um, eventually, studying geophysics um, was more like first year. It was not really hard to study, but by second year, or yeah, by second year, so something that actually changed my life, right? I could read, like study and all that, but then we normally go for field work, like you go to bushes, that like, you go to the funny places. So he's laughing because he's studying geology. Oh, so he can he can relate in his bones. <laughs> Which school? Yeah. I know you guys are chilled. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so we had the situation where we went for field work and so we had the lecturer then that uh, they call him like the father of geology in Africa, right? Like he's a prof, a professor and all. And when you see this man, we're on that rock, on the rock that day, he was holding a boulder. And when he was holding the boulder, I remember very well, like, it was like this boulder is shiny, sleeky. He was analyzing the elements and all like, sexy glossy they gave the same rock to me and i can't see it is it's stone <laughs> do you understand and the other part for me is i've always been clear like if i'm going to do something mm -hmm. i want to be the best mm -hmm. and i know when someone is the best now when i checked around my class or even the lecturers it was obvious that people are not really passionate about this mm. right so it was 
at that phase that I made up my mind that it's not geology <laughs> or geophysics then. So the question then was more like, okay, what's it going to be if it's not geology? Uh, while searching, um, I met uh, Ayodhya Adewomi, Jobberman, mm. uh, like co-founder of Jobberman. And reading the guy's story, no, meeting the guy or reading about him was more like, he was studying medicine, but as of that time, Deji was raising uh, grants, what, over $1 million for malaria. Mm. Like, for, like crazy stuff. And it seems like a kind of life I wanted to live. So immediately, the uh, you know, there was an event that was organized around writing proposal and all. So I attended, it seems like this is what I like to do. And okay, geology, yeah, we're doing it and all. And I was just trying my best. But at the same time, I was using a lot of uh, the period to learn in, about business, mm. right? Uh, I learned how to write proposal from there. I also talk about that part. But then the closest one is started the laundry with my friend, uh, Damola Dejobi. From there, expanded to uh, restaurants and all that. It was really good that, okay, you're building business. And at the same time, when I learned how to write proposal, you know now we write deck. It mm. was, that was the deck then. I was writing decks. Yeah. And, all, and I learned that from him. And as I then, you know, schools, they have uh, end of the year program and all that. They're trying to get sponsorship, right? I was the go-to guy that write the proposal for them. They'll pay me and then I'll do revenue sharing for them with them for sponsorship. And sponsorship. So I, I enjoyed, it was a good life for me mm. outside class. Like I had that going at the same time, um, I had an organized, so because at the point, the fact that a lot of guys went for Goldman Sachs and all that, it was a thing, push for it, mm. did the one young world, world business dialogue. I had the, I enjoyed myself, Clinton Global Investing Initiative and all that. And with that, that actually exposed me to business, that actually exposed me to the, to the world beyond. The uh, school. The school, right? And early on, I was able to catch on, right? And uh, from there, uh, I talked about the idea of some of the things I learned while traveling, while going for those programs. Why can't I extend it to other students? Mm. So with that, I created something called, um, with Damon Ladejobi, uh, Inspire uh, Lit360, right? Started it and then we're just supporting students because then for like three years, I was not going home. Every holiday, I go for an internship. I look for an internship, Diamond Bank, a lot of them and so while doing that i felt like i can i could extend the same thing to other students and with that we created the program the 360 and by the time i was done with school uh, organized a lot around uh, uh like something like ted talk fbi future big idea invited co-creation up to the Millennium foundation I do big things i had a great time <laughs> so by the time i was done with that with the program right it was more like I was pushing for sponsorship as well. But then I thought about my life or through school. Like I was writing proposal for other students to get sponsorship and all that, right? I was making money from it. But in reality, most of the people that have actually supported me has been around people, students saying, okay, I believe in your idea. Let's mm. do this. So through that, I was looking for the best word. And this was around 2012. So the best word to actually know, how can you create a platform? Where people can actually get fund for their idea. So with that, I deep I deep dive into crowdfunding. I was reading a lot about crowdfunding. Um, at the point, um, I I pushed most of my businesses and then focused on it. I got some guys in India. Those are the early days that I came to get a developer in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You can't you cannot really point to a community of developers then. And then I was getting some guys in India. I was burning a lot of money. Get, uh, getting them to build a platform, crowdfunding. I saw Kickstarter. I was like, I need to build a Kickstarter for Nigeria, right? And I was trying to build it. But then, these guys, I was paying them dollar pass. I was just graduating. So at the point, I had to learn how to code as well. Right. So because I couldn't sustain paying the Indian guys. Learn the basics and then did the beats. So I was working on that. I was working on crowdfunding um, as a platform. So eventually, I built something with the WordPress, right? And while doing that, I wanted to learn more about coding. So I met um, I met someone that became my boss eventually, uh, Temikola Ole, right? 
he's more like an OAU person as well. He grew up in that community. And when I met him, Nicola Ole, he started anti graffiti. Anti graffiti was more like the software shop for those days. Mm. He built the first version of uh, Bella Niger. Uh, like Timicola only was at the peak of it. Of tech and tech. tech. It was the whiskey for tech then. And when I met Timmy, like I learned a lot from him. Fresh out of school, I was made the CEO and the company was doing so well. We're doing project for ECOWAS and all that. I was and while joining, I learned I learned how to code. I do that. So I uh, learned a lot from that and learned actually how to build, right? Timmy actually helped a lot when it comes to learning. Then working with anti graffiti as a CEO, then I was exposed to a lot of things out of school. Uh, worked with Oando, Tony Blue Foundation, the branding, as Odin, Onuel, like mention all the top companies. We like work on them. Tony Temi was Tim Kalaoli was the guy then. So while working on that, right? At the same time, I was still working on the crowdfunding. Uh, the name then was Crowdy. Yeah, the Instagram is still mm -hmm. there, uh, Crowdy NG. And uh, I was able to build a platform for that. At the same time, you remember I, I talked about the fact that I had an, a student mm -hmm. program. So I was thinking about how to scale it. And while talking to DG, Okoyemi, Lekonden, they raised one million dollars in Nigeria, Jobaman. I was like, something is here. So, there's something here. <laughs> yeah. And I was trying to see how can I build this as a company as well, build the literary system as a company. So through that, um, uh, change the direction for literacy to be a platform that actually built career centers, right? Mm. And fortunately, around that period, I had a program at Stanford, right? Where I was actually exposed to the fact that there's something they call a career center. Mm. That, okay, before you're done with school, there's a place you're supposed to have where they actually help you to um, develop your career, get internship. You're able to actually build before you leave, right? And checking other universities too, is more like a norm in developed countries to have a career center. So my thinking then was, can we build this for Nigeria? And I started, right? Uh, we built a learning management system. We got like two universities that, okay, they're willing to partner and they do subscription. So now around the time I started was when tech generally, uh, a lot of the investors were more like living, like they're more like visitors, they're mm. living in Nigeria. And it was really tough. But fortunately, uh, I was able to get my old guys, like Ayode Jadewumi, Bolaji, uh, Bolaji Adewe, to be, they believed in the idea and they invested, right? And you know those days, like, when you invest... How, like, how long did you do it for? For, like, three years. And, and what happened afterwards? Or why did you stop or exit from it? Exit. So I built it for a period, and then... At the point, we had to pivot to consulting because when you think about engaging with university, the tunnel, the sales cycle is very, very long. long. Yeah. And you don't, no matter what you raise, right? Bureaucracy. So, bureaucracy is there. So we develop an LMS. So fortunately, at the point, we're able to get a consulting project with some uh, international development agency, such that the company was able to sustain itself. But at that point, I was burnt out. Like I just needed a break, so I got someone that focused on it and then was managing it. So while I was at that, was when World Bank reached out to me, right, uh, through one of our advisors, and then uh, they're trying to solve a problem around unemployment. And this right, has been kind of fits into the career center. Yeah, that makes sense. And it has always been around unemployment, and yeah, uh, joining World Bank, I was able to work on that. I enjoyed it. Um, then then money Africa happened. Money. money. Okay, well, because it was a word back that you did just before you started money. Just before I started, but in between, a lot of my friends would say, "Okay, we're trying to build a bank. We're trying to build this. Family, come on board." Yeah, you have a couple of them there, um, and even moving from education, I've always been an impact person. Yeah, like, we want to change Africa, but the fintechs. When everybody was jumping on fintech then, so like, no, I don't want to follow the trend, but. Uh, me, away me was working on something and then he just said like, I should come on board. What come and it seems interesting, a lot of impact. So then I started thinking fintech was still connected to education, right? Uh and that was when um I connected with that ball and Did you guys ever build because when you're talking about money story, you said that you guys were just doing that on site, but you're building a different product. Did that yeah. product ever like come to light? You just like <laughs> 
the moment money was working it was, it was just it made sense right yeah and uh yeah that was it that makes sense what would you say because all of this building that you've done getting met in admission doing your physics realizing that it's not for you then just focus on like impact of school like all of these things you've done what would you say are like the top three biggest lessons you've learned um i feel the first one is around consistency is very or first is being able to have clarity right uh you don't have to put yourself under a lot of pressure um then there's a phase where you need to explore there's that thing that people say you need to find your passion it's tough <laughs> really because it's evolved it's dynamic right and being putting yourself under pressure that okay this is how i want it's really tough why can't you live and while you're living you're exploring at the point you're going to find okay this works this doesn't but that part of exploration and often we find ourselves in a situation where we just want to survive mm. that part of being able to explore the luxury is not there for a lot of people but if you're able to take time to explore and say, okay, I've tried this so eventually you're going to find what you can settle in a bit for that period, right? And then the other part is, uh, so the first, being able to get clarity. The other one is consistency. It's very, you don't, you need to persevere. Yeah. Right? Uh, before I was done with school at all, most of my friends, they, so when they know that this is what I'm doing, they said they're not surprised. So there's a thing around you being consistent and then your friends your folks they know that okay they know you for this yeah and so even if it's not working they know that you you keep going until you find your way you yeah. follow through a lot of people are depending on you they're on the lookout for you like okay we believe in you right even when it's not working you try you follow through you're not sure about what works and the thing is the more you try the luckier you get and the other part is being able to um being able to leverage on the network you have, mm. being conscious about it, investing in people. You're not using people, invest in them. Be deliberate. It's important. They know. And when it's time for you, for them to do something, you, they will call you. So most of the things I've done has been more around people just saying, okay, Femi, you can do this. Or even when I'm doing something, people hear about it and then I just want to be part of it. So for instance, when we started money, uh, we have two guys that joined us, uh, Adebola, Adenira, and Leke, right? It was more like, I couldn't afford their salary. They were working with big companies then, and they were just like, we believe in what you're doing. We just want to be part of it, right? So it's more like you do the track record that makes people to believe in you, that you follow through. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Are there any mistakes that you've made that if you're going to do it all over again, you'd stay away from it? Oh... Uh... I feel most of the things that I've done has been more of a learning in terms of, I don't see them as mistakes, right? Mm. Because in the first place... Is there anything you do differently though? Differently? I'm trying to think. Uh, so if you're going to go back to... Building money. Even, let's say, the last 10 years of your life. Okay. Because like money is also, in a way, a reflection of all the tiny yeah. tiny things you've done people yeah. you've met experience that you've gotten so if you go back like 10 years so 20 2013 yeah. and you know that this is where you end up share but you could probably maybe get there faster yeah. or something if you change something it's would you do would you just like let me just go through my day to day and i'll end up there or is there something that you do different thing fundamentally um i'll push for get my mba right uh do you have your mba now no, no not yet okay so why would you why would you push for it so beyond that it will not be geophysics okay deliberately is going to be something else maybe economics maybe of uh, something else right uh and i push, actually did i tried right and then the second leg to that is being able to push my mba not not nigeria being able to deliberate for that ivy league or thereabout because in essence uh it it changes your trajectory it changes how it you change your mind yeah your mind how network you yeah yeah that makes sense so no geofix this um and, and and get to that mba yes that makes sense does eunice still do anything with um money africa what? eunice you mentioned that she was the oh. she was the one that you went to you drove to Ekbe. so um to Ekbe to so i'll show you a picture of eunice uh can i yeah, yeah, yeah. so eunice story is very interesting so this was eunice when we met her 
this was our kiosk. Oh. Yeah. And then this was the last time we went to Vista. I think that was last year. This is and this is, wow, send me these pictures. We need to, yeah, we need to. Wow. So this is our community. So this is her cluster. Yeah, this is our cluster. So, Very nice. So she was able to move from there. And a lot of them like that. We actually had a guy that he was almost committing suicide. And then the fact that he was able to have access to the community, the loan, they just, I feel that's our biggest strength, the sense of community. In yeah, I know that even beyond them just doing their business, they're it's making like impact. impact yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Final word, is there anything that you want someone to take it from your story? So they forget all of this of how money started, all the plenty things that you've done in between your career. And even the lessons that, we've, that, that you've shared was one thing like, hey, this is, this is Femi and this is one thing that you must remember when you think about me and my business. Uh, primarily, uh, we're very keen about solving the hardest problem in Africa. The hardest problem. The hardest problem. And what I mean by that is, we don't care about the trends, uh, new bank, digital. No. It's about who we work for Africa. And we need uh, fantastic people to do that. We already have great people that are working with us. So if you think you want to be part of solving this, please just ping me. That's a that's a very nice one. It's, it's very different from what most people say. Fabi, it was nice. nice speaking with you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Guys, my name is PC Timmy. This is Founders Connect. And here I have conversations with amazing entrepreneurs and senior operators in the African tech ecosystem. We just heard the story of Femi of Money Africa. Check the app out and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out. Okay.